It's the Friendly Fire Show, episode 240 for the start of July 2023. I'm one of your co-hosts, Steve Wright. Joining me, Ben Salter. Uh, ben, yeah, I got an invitation in the mail. You did. It's what real for? for well for yeah, your no. your wedding. Like you Do know you what know it's for. Of... What do you mean? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know what we're talking about. It could be anything. You're a very popular man, Steve. You're invited to lots of things. That's true. Uh, yeah, I, very tough to make a wedding invitation. I had to make it myself because I couldn't figure out how to get one. Like, just incapable of figuring it out. They don't just appear out of uh, thin air, like, when you're ready? No, I, I tried to do, like, a, a template just on a website, whatever, and they were garbage, like, when you try to change the details. So, I was like, I'm just going to make this myself. Uh, did that. It actually worked. So, now, now you got it. And it was I'm sure it was a collaborative process with, with Claire, your fiancé. No, 100% no. me. She, oh. she was in charge of distribution. Well, okay, so, and like we're getting really into the weeds. If you don't want me to give so much information about your wedding, please just tell me to... We'll just d- delete this entire recording. I'm going to be the MC. Mm. I noticed immediately that the invitation says Claire and Ben. Mm. Now, I don't know if that's because you always, on an invitation, put the female... Per- is, I don't know if there's traditions or not. Or if you've just that's decided, fine. like, are you guys Claire and Ben, or are you Ben and Claire when, like, talk, when your friends talk about you? That's my we'll question. We'll figure that out. I well, don't know. I'm not, um, I'm Matt and Steve, and I, like, in my own hmm. conceited, egotistical way, I'd like to be Steve and Matt, but no one, no one goes for that. It's always Matt and Steve, and I feel like... Let me, let me do some workshopping on that, and I'll get back to you. It is because uh, the, all the designs that I ripped off had <laughs> the uh, bride's name first, so I copied that. Well, you're better half, clearly, especially yeah. if she's listening, so... Now you're you're definitely no danger of that. You're definitely totally in the good fine. books. Say, say whatever you like. It's totally uh, well, fine. All good. Ah, oh, good. Now let me really talk about what I think about her. No, she's great. And congratulations. Not yet. It's not happened yet. But no, lots well, of time to go. You're go plan there. everything. Good. Yeah. <laughs> in the meantime. In the meantime, we've, we've talked to go. You go. We've got lots of Final Fantasy 16 to play. Are you actually playing it? It's like the the game of the times. A little Ish. Bit. Like yeah. If the, yes, I, I'm how, playing it how, how many hours are you in? Do you think? Two hours of the demo, and then two hours of the demo again because my save didn't transfer properly, Uh, and maybe five, six hours after that. Yeah, you're probably ahead of me. I had exactly the same Mm. problem with the the save thing. I'm like, maybe it's because of the way we both did it. I'm not sure. I played on the discless X, uh, discless Xbox. One of those things was right. I played on the discless PS5 upstairs to do the demo, Mm. finished it, saved it put the save into the cloud, was mm. cheap and bought the disc version, so I had to play it on the other PlayStation downstairs, and it just wouldn't... Like, I could see the save file from the demo on that PlayStation, but it just wouldn't acknowledge its existence at all. Did you have the same... Yeah, I, I did similar. I, only, I did digital and, and digital, but across two PlayStations, and I didn't think about that until... Because that normally would just work, I would have thought, but I haven't really had a demo save going to a game... That I can remember recently. So I wonder if maybe I wonder if we should have downloaded the. You didn't try downloading the demo on the second PlayStation and just like booting it up. That probably would have worked. Now that I think about it, no, I went to the other PlayStation. This is getting real. You've got first world problems. <laughs> two PlayStation issues. I went to the other one that I played the demo on. I opened the demo, then I opened the game again, but it already synced my cloud save, so it was like back into your new game. And then I tried to go out and load into the demo save but it like wasn't carrying over properly because it's already like you've already started this game anyway yeah doesn't matter it, it's it's only like when you can smash through and cut remove the cutscenes because you already watch them it's it's like 25 minutes of gameplay oh not even that it's like 15 not minutes of gameplay which is like it's a weird thing if you if i'm getting too far ahead just pull me back but yeah like it's super pretty it looks like a playstation 5 game but like mm. it suffers from the same problem that like final fantasy i think it was 13 did at the start like you're just kind of running down a single corridor there's not a lot of room for exploration it's gorgeous surroundings around you but like it's basically like you're playing the original resident evil or like the remake on gamecube because like everything's kind of like gorgeous but like it's pre-rendered and you can't interact with it you can't yeah like it's just like a sky like a really fancy skybox really um yeah i'd say that that's probably a fair description It's, it's got that um certainly it's got learnings and influences from Western RPGs, but they're often quite open, almost too open to the point that you can get stuck somewhere and it takes forever to travel these massive worlds. Yeah. Kind of looks like some of those, but then it's got that very Japanese, very Resident Evil. 
this bit looks nice, but you can only actually walk in a little part of it, even though it looks like you should be able to get there. There's just invisible walls everywhere. Yeah, like look off into the distance. It looks gorgeous, but like you don't get to go, you don't get to go there. Like it's just it's pretty. And the characters, yeah. like everything's really really nice, but then yeah, like all the all the good stuff is happening behind a cutscene, and if you're so inclined, you can just skip it. And, like, you still kind of get a sense of what's going on in the story. It's like a Game of Thrones retold by Japanese yeah. developers, is, is what I can make of it. And yet, I still quite like that, and I'm, I'm finding it... Absolutely, I'm tuning out in the massive cutscenes. There's, I'm picking up my phone every time. I've got stuff to do. I don't have time to be watching a 45-minute cutscene. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting the gist. Like, and that's often them. how I watch TV shows. Yeah, you, skipping I'm them, you probably skip too much. Uh, the... The, the vibe from all the reviews, which I'd read none of them, but people just directly tweeted basically saying, you know, good combat, great world, interesting characters, the story's good for the first two thirds, and then it just totally ruins itself and it disappears. Oh. Uh, which, knowing that already, puts me off getting that invested in it. Like, um, I, of course, these people could be wrong, but it seemed to be a pretty common thread, and I'm just assuming it's going to get bad, and so I may as well not get too invested in the story. It's more about the vibe and the world and, and the combat and that stuff. Yeah, like, I don't know if I'm being too... Like, it's it's not because it's a PlayStation game. Like, the combat's good, but the combat's just very samey right now, and I want it to open up to more things. And I know, like, in the demo, I didn't play the thing in the demo where it unlocked more things, so it's like, here's a real mm. experience, looks like. But it's like, right now, I have one a Aeon. That's, like, Final Fantasy X lingo. I have one of the summons. I have, like, firepower... Like, the power yeah. of fire. And, like, every big boss is basically just hammering square just, until you have to yeah. dodge once and then hammer square some more. And then, like, maybe do you use your R2 square and triangle powers or do you save them until you stagger the guy and then hit him with two powers at once and then just keep hammering X? Like, there's not a lot of variety in the combat so far, and I hope it opens up to be more engaging it's yeah. also really easy i'm playing on action which mode. of the which of the little rings the helper rings do you have on whatever they're actually called uh the healing one that I, I don't really need but you don't so i mean i think that's a good feature so you can it gives you three at the start and it gives you more later uh but i found that they made it even on action mode um way too easy because they can one of them is like automatic evade which is like half the combat is evading oh yeah um another one makes you stronger i think one of them gives you your health back automatically the only one i have on is like your your mate the dog toggle whatever it's called um, oh does he stay with you i just like literally i'm at the point where i just got the dog not too long ago um so you can have him no spoilers uh you, you can have him uh attack enemies and things like that which you can automatically we can manually control yourself with the d-pad yeah um that's annoying. You can also just put a ring on and he will just automatically fight for you. I think oh. that's useful. Yeah, because I keep so I, stuffing up and hitting potion by accident when I'm trying to get him to attack because I, I must have hit like left on the D-pad too many times and I'm in the wrong mm, like, sub menu. You're in the other thing. Yeah. So I, th I, I, I do think that's kind of a cool way to approach this style of combat, especially because it's so different for Final Fantasy. Some people will want it to be super easy because they, they prefer a turn-based game. This has gone the total other way and that's probably the thing we haven't said yet. It's like mm. a full full-on change to action jrpg yeah. which is not a common genre action rpg is but not for japanese games um not to this degree mm. and so obviously the final fantasy 7 remake it went a long way towards this but it, this has kind of gone all in uh and it's the reason i like it like before final fantasy 7 remake never really got into any of these games they were always just too slow paced not interested in turn-based combat for long enough like i like it at the start but eventually get bored of it and I think I'll get Border Combat here too. I'm not sure that I'll finish this game and I'm not committed to doing it. If the story falls off a cliff and I, it feels too repetitive, I'm happy to put it down. But I'm yeah. doing it now. Um, and I, I think it's the right way to go. Like, I really like that they've done something different. It's, it's kind of like your Zelda totally changing it up for Breath of the Wild. Some people aren't going to be happy because it's different. It's very different. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's just a lot more accessible. And I do find that the combat, even though it is repetitive, you get into a nice rhythm, like especially without the assist off. And that would be my tip. If you're finding it too easy, take off all of those rings because you, you get a lot more manual control. Uh, and it's kind of knowing when to dodge, when to try to do a combo, when to try to use one of your R2, whatever powers. Uh, I still think it's quite fun. It is combat -y, yeah. like too much combat, probably. Like you don't have enough time between it. But uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good. I don't like. I'm not saying that I'm amazing now because I've I've played Elden Ring and I'm so good at those kind of things. But like, 
the healing ring doesn't really benefit me because I'm not really getting hit too often. The only time I get mm-hmm. really get hit is like a character will telegraph any attack, any attack. And like sometimes I hit evade because I think it's going to just be like a swipe. And it turns out to be this, like, superly, overly long wind-up, and then the guy, like, rolls around the screen for 25 seconds, and, like, I've hit evade too soon, and I get hit, and that's when I get hit, and then the ring gives me back, like, half the damage I would have lost. It's just, it seems a little too easy if you're used to playing things like this, even with, like, assists Mm. off, really. And I wish there was, like, a harder difficulty... And, like, I don't mean to be... That, like, I sound like a wanker saying that. I wish it was harder because I'm, like, a, I'm beating these Yeah, I do get it. I, but it, it does feel easy, but I also feel like it would be way too long. Like, it's it's not meant to be an Elden Ring Dark Souls, just constant pushing you down challenge. <laughs> like, it's meant to be you get through the story pretty quick. Uh, yeah. And there's all these side quests, which I've ignored to this point. I've kind of just thought, this game's going to be massive. It's easy enough that I don't feel like I need to level up by doing side quests, which is often the thing in these sub RPGs, right? Yeah. Um, so I've just ignored them, and now I feel like I probably pushed through the main story too quickly, and there's a bunch of stuff I've missed. But it's it's out of that fear that everyone's like, oh, this is a sixty to eighty hour game, which I'm not in for. Like I want to get it done potentially. Yeah. I my thinking is side quests. If they were good, they'd be a main quest. Um, but it does seem like there's more variety there. So maybe I'm missing out on some of it because I've dodged too many of those. Yeah. The other thing that like really bothers me, like it's there's the gameplay to cutscene ratio for me right now is probably like uh, like 70 30 gameplay is 30 and cutscenes are a lot more than that. Yeah, but heavy. then like the combat encounters if they were more like I don't need variety in terms of like combat animations and things from like the same enemy but like this the, some of the encounters it's just they just take too long like they're not if it was like half the amount of time in one combat encounter it would still be fun and i don't want like yeah. random final fantasy like random fights starting as you're walking through the maps like final fantasy 10 style but i just want it like to be like a little more like you can put more enemies in my path and i would probably enjoy that more than just fighting like scary looking night guy for 15 minutes just because like it's and it's that i probably do want more variety actually i'm going back on what i just said because like they only have like three or four big moves and once you've seen the move happen once like you know how to you probably will know how to to counter it and then that just do that like four times in like four or five loops and then combat done like it's just that side of things draining me and doesn't make me want to come back to it straight away like i will keep playing it and probably like hour-long chunks but i'm not like super keen to get back into it yeah and i actually think an hour-long chunk is a surprisingly good way to play this game even though it's so massive and you kind of feel like you don't want to do that hour-long chunk is kind of like you get your 45 minutes of cutscene, so that's almost like an episode of your tv show and you get your 15 minutes of gameplay and it's, it almost works out every time that that's a good spot to pause yeah and you haven't made very much progress but it's a it's a, a point where you can kind of pick up on from when you left off last time relatively easily uh, except when you get stuck in one of those combat loops where it's like you beat all the guys, you think you're done, and then just more of the same guys come again. <laughs> and it's like, oh, what do you like? That bit I don't like so much. Yeah. Um, how's your performance been? I've had the game crash a couple times mm. in the same fight. No crashes. I did see Digital Foundry said this is one of the few games they recommend playing on quality mode, like graphics mode, because the performance mode offers like no performance benefits doesn't really make any sense uh and normally having a oled tv that has hdmi 2.1 as long as you have decent frame rate like decent enough the vor covers it for you and you don't notice it dips yeah but they pretty much said it's so bad that it goes below the threshold like there's a point that it needs to reach for that to work and for most games that drop below 60 or whatever that's a non-issue but for this one it is um which is a little odd because it doesn't yeah. seem that different so i'm playing it on graphics mode in 30 frames a second Seems okay. Um, the only time I, I had it's... some really noticeable frame rate dips, and it was in the demo. It wasn't the fr- like you play as like the the fire breathing phoenix thing, and that's like the first thing yeah. you do in the in the demo. But not that first instance, like the second one near the end of the demo. Mm. Giant frame rate dips, like chuggy frame rate dips, like it's like ooh, yeah, like you were worried about the the PlayStation uh, like I... exploding. 
since I played that again because my demo save didn't move over, I feel like it was better in the real game than it was in the demo. But maybe that's just my recency bias kicking in. Um, I can't remember. I just know it was bad. It was bad both times. It might have been worse in one, but I I didn't make I didn't think. Didn't to think. Yeah, I do think it does look like a current gen game. Like it, it's weird that we're here nearly three years into this generation and we're finally talking about something which isn't cross gen. Mm. Um, but we've kind of hit that point of like it looks really good, the characters look good, the world looks good, but it means that performance has gone back to like early last gen where things are either 30 frames or they're struggling to get to 60. And it's almost like this generation started, everything cross-gen ran like flawlessly because it was having to target like the Xbox series or well, the Xbox One X and the PS4 Pro and those games just run flawlessly on the current gen. Yeah. Now that we've moved to exclusive current gen only, we're hitting that point of things just going back. Like they're everyone's prioritizing visuals. They're not worrying about performance as much. Uh, this is kind of the worry that this is what was going to happen again, and will probably happen every generation. Well, yeah, and it's it's because like uh, these consoles are competing against the PlayStation or the PlayStation, the PC, which is never out of date. Like if mm. if you want to have crazy frames, you up you get a forty. 80 now like you just you keep getting new components to replace these consoles could run 60 frames when they were powering games you know built for last gen and we're gonna get to this weird bit where and like we see that with starfield tony tony ugh, todd howard's come out and said you know like we're, we we can't consistently get near 60 we can definitely hit 30 so we're gonna prioritize that the game's gonna come out at 30 frames and the this new current gen hardware will run it just fine we're gonna get to that weird thing where maybe 30 is the consistent standard which happened last gen yeah and as soon as we get to the next iteration up they'll start designing it and maybe we'll hit 60 frames in some games here or maybe we'll get the xbox whatever they're going to call it 75 just for a random number and the playstation 6 that can run it on 60 easy like mm. i like things in 60 frames but i also just want them to work well so like and it's worse when it underperforms and you see it start chugging like i'd rather have a, a consistent presentation than something that's going to be too varied for you know like tv extra processing things that you have with 2.1 HDMI 2.1 to like be able to cope with but yeah it's going to be ongoing uh but it is a good looking game like that's the main thing and it's probably uh we're back in that that point in time where you could play on the graphics mode again yeah i think for this whole generation it's been like always play on performance the resolution doesn't matter the the frame rate does uh but this one's kind of flipped it around so definitely a change and something that's very noticeable um more broadly, I suppose this has been such a big change for Final Fantasy. Do you think they've pulled it off? Do you think long-term Final Fantasy fans... So, like, I've been drawn in because I didn't really care for the old games, and 7 Remake convinced me to play it, therefore I played this one. Or I played the demo, which convinced me to keep playing. Uh, and I like it, but I feel like it might annoy or put off those really old-school Final Fantasy fans who are just too much like, this is too different for me, I'm not into that. Well... I think I think there is a need to evolve and to iterate and to try to like this is this is a triple A insanely mm. expensive title from the point of view of what a stupid name Square is it Square Enix Creative Business Unit three I think is the name Whatever. of the developer yeah how okay. creative jeez I'm inspired already like they they want this to appeal to as many people as possible they're making it frictionless yeah. if I'm going to start using all these weird like marketing jargon stupid terms but. If you are so diehard as a as an RPG fan that you want turn based, there are games that will cater to this. It's just not Final Fantasy sixteen. So yeah. I think this is better for Square Enix on the whole. It's gonna appeal to more people, it's gonna bring more people in. Especially people who like are in love with Game of Thrones, who maybe were disappointed with how it ended and maybe hoping this is filling that gap. They can play it in story mode, they can just breeze through it and you know, the people that instead of you picking up your phone, not paying attention to the cutscenes, they're like trying to do that for the gameplay and then like intent to watch the cutscenes. I don't know if the point, writing yeah. is strong enough for that to happen, but like there are people that are certainly doing that. So I think it's yeah, it may or not be the right move for Die hard fans, but it's the right move overall, I think. Yeah, think? I think we're so we're 16 mainline games in. It's actually more than that when you consider there was like a 10 2 and or whatever. So we're putting more like 20 or over decades. 
And I still feel like Final Fantasy is that that franchise that has its big following, and it's like it's a big cult following, and it has that big fan base. But it's it's not hit that mainstream like what Elden Ring did for the Soul series. It's still at the Dark Souls level. Like it's got its yeah. big fan base, but it hasn't gone that <laughs> Elden Ring level. And I think it has the potential to do that. Like I think it's a lot more accessible, no doubt about that. Um, a lot more interesting. The fact that it's PS5 exclusive, I think, probably helps it. Like it's that you need to have the fancy new current gen console to actually play this. It's not cross gen. Um, it's kind of Witcher 3 as well. Like, The Witcher 3 did that. It just became this big global hit. doesn't matter that you haven't played the previous ones. It was so different. And I can see those, like, Western-style, Witcher 3-style RPG influences within it. Like, it's very much learned from some of that. This game probably began development when that was, like, the, the big thing at the time in 2015, 16. Yeah. And so you can see that learning from it. Still very Japanese, as we said. Like, the, the huge world that Witcher 3 had you explore... It's not that. It's a huge world, but you explore it in a different way. I think it, it feels similar, and I really like the vibe, and I like just walking around and kind of getting the atmosphere of it. But it's not the same kind of Western-style open world. It's still very much that Japanese-style Yakuza, Resident Evil. Like, you're walking around, but you're in that confined, confined somewhat blocky yeah. space that you can actually move in, which is so Japanese JRPG style of game. But then the combat is so different. Like, it's... they've bought in entirely and i'm glad they've tried something they've tried to evolve it it's not the same old and that's what final fantasy is meant to be right like each new mainline game unless it's a direct sequel is quite different to the previous one so they've stuck to that did you play 15 i played it a little bit i actually remember when i realized that i owned it and i had a save file from years ago we spoke about it on this show with former host shane convinced i vaguely recall this episode because he convinced he convinced me to play it and i remember him saying in his over your way while well, he's man in the desk the audio engineer that he was is was of this show um he he kept saying like he must have this is probably when we'd had a couple of um a couple of whatever we were drinking at the time back when we were less responsible hosts uh and i said you know what shane i'm gonna i'm gonna try this final fantasy 15 you've sold me on it uh which was rare back in the day back in our five-man podcast days having someone actually convince you to play the thing because we all kind of had our different types of games we'd play Rarely would we convince each other to try something, but he did. And I recall him saying, you're going to hate it. You are going to hate it. And hate it, I did. Like, it was oh. just too weird and, like, just couldn't get into it. Well, I was going to say that I like 15 better than 16, but that's just mm. me. It's a little bit more of the Western approach to open world. And and I haven't really played a lot of side quests in, in 16, but, like, a lot of that kind of stuff in 15. But things that I found rewarding it wasn't like the ubisoft style like here's seven million icons on a map but something that i thought was quite good it was like a nice amalgamation of the two but i guess like to that point i'm glad and the people who made 16 made well are making i guess still 14 so it's like a different set of people doing it i'm glad it's not just like the same it's not like a sequel it's not gonna be re7 and re8 Mm. like it's it's different enough as it should be like final fantasy is well, apart from all the, the 10 twos and the 13 twos out all there, the like twos. it's a different yeah. set of characters, it's a different universe, it's a different setting, a different thing. The Final Fantasy VII Rebirths or whatever the next one's called, yeah, that doesn't count. But yeah, like it's it's you you sort of know what you're getting in for, like this weird epic tale with the, you know yeah. the the fate of the something universe world is at stake, and it's you know up to you, and you can call on your your magic that always stays the same when you can get your summons whatever they're called this time and like all of that like that 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 to me is the core of of final fantasy and that's still Mm -hmm. there it's just in a slightly different format with different packaging um i'm not as excited about it as i thought i was gonna be i'm not disappointed in it by any stretch i don't think i would have given it like a 10 i don't think i'd give it a, a six either i think it's probably like a solid seven five or eight for me based on like the i don't know not double digit hours of of gameplay i've had like it's good you'll you'll yeah. get your value well, out of still it still very good yeah uh yeah i'd agree with that it's probably somewhere in that range i think it's come out at a very good time so probably for the people who are double dipping and playing zelda as well you're probably just reaching the end of that or did recently there's the big hitters are still just enough time away that you've, you've got a good few months to knuckle, knuckle down and play this so do more of that. I like that it has probably purposely blocked in that zone when most games dodge. Like, it's so rare to have something, especially something this big and this kind of momentous and a console exclusive and something that takes hours to finish. 
Mm. Good time. So good on you, Square Enix, for putting it in this time of year when I know it's because <clears> it's the Northern Hemisphere summer and they try to dodge stuff right in that time and they want to have everything for the holiday. Yeah. Oh man, uh, July is July is bare bones. But anyway. Yes. Yeah. But you can pick this game up, and if it is going to be one that if you're playing it, you're going to be playing for a while if you play through to the end. So well, and do you don't like skip cutscenes. Apparently, you can get through it in about ten hours if you skip the cutscenes. But no, I'm surprised it's that long. But <laughs> anyhow, it is it's cutscene heavy. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. But hey, mm. you, it's it, it's pretty looking. Like all the cutscenes are pretty. So I'm not trying to do it a disservice by saying that. Like it's it's the whole package you're playing and you're watching. And if that's your bag, then you're Absolutely. gonna like this. Yeah. If you have a PS5 and you ever had any interest in Final Fantasy, but you haven't been able to get into them or you've never tried them, I would say it's worth worth trying the demo. Like, one, it's there, it's it's free to play, you get a good sense of what it is. Play it through, though. It's like a two-hour demo if you watch all the cutscenes. The first half is Walking Simulator. So don't let that drag you down. <laughs> when you get to some actual combat, I think it gets a bit better and it's more of a representation of the actual game. So give the whole thing a go. And it ends on Flying Simulator. Um, it, it like it may or may not be a good entry point into the franchise on the whole. Like mm. if you don't have any patience for turn-based stuff, it's probably not going to work to then dive back into older entries in the franchise. But if you like the idea of all the magics and all that kind of stuff, like it's maybe maybe it will fuel a new passion for you, mm. or maybe not, or maybe you know just stick to Final Fantasy VII remake if you're sort of into this, and maybe dabble in the in fifteen. Otherwise, it's probably a little bit too different to, to change. And it's also probably a lot easier than all the other entries. So you might think easy. you're going to like try 13 or something and just get smoked because you're not ready for, for what's happening. But hmm. I digress. You know, what's, you know what's not easy, Steve? It's buying an Xbox Series X because it's now going to cost you fifty dollars more. Oh, and I was going to say is... it's easy because they're available and they're they're plentiful in stores. But like you said, Are yes, they? they're more expensive now. <laughs> Um, this is a, a big loss for Xbox. Like, just by doing nothing, they had the cheaper console. All they had to do was continue to do nothing. They've also increased the price of Xbox Game Pass. I think that's more reasonable. It's a couple of bucks for either the, the console version or the Ultimate yeah. version. A dollar for Game Pass, three dollars for Ultimate in Australia. Yeah, I mean, so that was always going to happen. But the Series X going up to eight hundred. It's now the same price as the PS Five, which went up to eight hundred like a year ago. Um, oh, I just think that's a real tough sell. I think there's a, a huge market of people who just want a current-gen console. The people who are buying at this point, like two and a half, three years in, are uh, not the early adopters. They're the people who, if you really want one, even though they're hard to get, you could have gotten one by now, either console. Yeah. It's, it's the people who were either waiting for a price drop and you've gone the wrong way, or the people who have now just decided they've had enough of their Xbox One or their PS4 and they just want to play some current-gen games uh, and... They don't really care which platform they get because they're mainly going to be playing COD and a couple of other things. And it's, you know, the exclusives are not enough to sway them. Yeah. Uh, they're probably not playing a Final Fantasy. It's probably not that market. Well, and quite honestly, like a, a cheaper Xbox compared to what PlayStation's out there for, plus Game Pass, even though it's gone up too. Like mm. doing doing the calendar for games coming up for the rest of the year, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is going to be on Game Pass. Uh, the, I think Persona 5 Tactica, unless I'm completely wrong. Like, there's a bunch of things coming to Game Pass. So it's that thing of, like, yeah, I spend a little bit per month, but you get, like, ten new games, maybe. Maybe two interest you out of the yeah. lot. But, like, you it's still get yourself. all these things. Like, that that was a selling point. And not to, like, try to defend Microsoft, but, like, at least when they put up the Series S by 50 bucks, you were getting twice the storage with the new yeah. black version S. Out of it. Like, this is just, we're raising the price of the Series X and, like, it's it's the same. It's just, give us 50 extra dollars if you're in Australia. Not you Americans. We'll, we'll yeah, loss lead thing. with you, but not for not for the Australians. That's garbage. And, and that's, that's basically my point entirely. It's like, there is that market of people who just want the console. The cheaper one is enough for them to pick that one. Now I would expect that audience probably would pivot and think cheaper, a little bit cheaper with Game Pass or but now they're the same price, I'll just go PlayStation because that's the that's the main console. And yep. it is. It positions itself as the, the dominant console, and it is. So just to, I don't get why they've done this. Microsoft is so massive, you'd think that could loss lead in every market. It's not even loss leading, really. It's it's the price they're launched with. They're not price dropping here. It's not like when you know the PlayStation, wasn't the PlayStation, what was it, Sega Saturn, had to drop immediately because the PlayStation undercut it. It's... It's actually going the other way. PlayStation put their price up and you just had to do nothing. I would have thought something as big as Microsoft could just take that hit. I get inflation is a thing. Uh, just It seems like an odd choice. Well, there's a whole bunch of potentially odd choices, but I guess 
and I'm thinking this through as I'm saying it, so I could be completely wrong. But as an example, like we're now in where everything everything for Microsoft's gone up. So games like mm. Forza Motorsport, games like Starfield are now going to be 120 bucks as opposed to 100. So there's that 20 bucks extra per game unless you're on Game Pass. So maybe by raising these prices, like Microsoft is just, just illustrating, it doesn't care how you play its games. And if the price per game is too expensive. And if the Xbox is too expensive, but you have like a crappy computer that has a 1080 display, just give us 20 bucks a month and you'll get Game Pass Ultimate and you can stream Starfield to your whatever you have in front of you and you don't need a console and you don't need to buy the game. Like maybe that's like maybe they honestly don't care and that's enough. I don't think that's probably like why they're raising the prices to push people into Game Pass, but like. Maybe they really don't care how you're accessing these games and games are for everyone, but it's weird. I don't think they do care that much. Like they, they've said in this FTC case at the moment that there was that big time when the PS5 was massively outselling the Series X and yet it was easier to get a PS5 than a Series X and they've pretty much revealed now that's because they there was a chip shortage and there probably still is <clears throat> uh, and they diverted a lot of resources that could have made Series Xs to build their data center or whatever they're calling it to stream all these games and Game Pass, whereas Sony just kept making consoles. So it was easier to get a PS5 even though it was selling more. Uh, so I don't think they do care that much. But again, I, it was just it seemed like an, an easy win for them to just have the slightly cheaper console. Wouldn't make a huge difference to Microsoft's bottom line. Um, yeah, it's it's makes it harder to recommend a series x well yeah like that's the recommendation like i'd recommend if, if people are sort of in interested in games but can't afford two consoles i'd probably say get a playstation 5 and you know like do you have something that has a screen that you can you know like connect a bluetooth controller to great mm. so buy the playstation games that come out if you have 20 extra bucks a month right now and you don't want to spend you know like 20 bucks a month is a lot cheaper than $120 in one pop for Starfield. Pay 20 bucks a month. And even if you can't play on your PlayStation, you can stream with Game Pass Ultimate and you're set. Like, you don't need to get a second one. You can you probably don't. get a, a Steam Deck or something. Like, I don't know. Like, that's unattainable in Australia. Or, like, I don't know yeah, if you can homebrew your Switch or something and, like, stream it to your Switch. Like, the genius person, not that I'm saying that this is a legal thing and you should do it, but, like, if you could somehow get game pass on your playstation 5 like th then you're absolutely set just like you have your tv well, your playstation and your xbox stream machine done well and that's that's the hole in uh microsoft plan is people will buy the ps5 probably thinking to do that but then they'll just subscribe to playstation plus because it's kind of a oh we get a bunch of games on this it's on the console i already have it makes more sense and yeah i think game pass is a much superior service to playstation plus but if you're in the playstation ecosystem and that's all you're in probably makes more sense just to go all in there and stick to that. Well, and if you so, demand like extreme performance, get a nice like if you're if you're demanding something like of that nature and that means you're sort of like um, like I hate the term gamer, but that means you're a gamer. So like buy a streaming but not a streaming PC, buy a, like a, a proper gaming PC and play Starfield and play Forza Horizon on mm -hmm. your PC. Like you don't you don't need an Xbox right now, really, which I guess was the point, but also it's to Microsoft's detriment to some extent, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's kind of come around to the play wherever you like, but then Sony's caught up enough that they're still like, but buy our console and play the other things also on our console. Well, yeah. Don't it's, play wherever you like, play on this because you have to. So give us money because you want to. Yeah, I think Game Pass isn't as attractive as it was previously. And now the, uh, mainly because Xbox hasn't released anything on it. Like the whole thing of first party releases day one, there just hasn't been any. Uh, the most recent one was what Goldeneye, and that game came out 25 years ago. Like, let's yeah. not count that. <clears throat> well, it's the so, Netflix thing of like you get it for when you yeah. need it, you play the things you want, and then you don't pay for it until the next thing you want comes out, which is it's few and far between right now. It's changing a lot. Like, there, I think in the at the end of the year, the things like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, even just to dabble in it, because you can, because mm. again, if you're paying for it, it's free. It's not like you're like spending yeah. more money you can at least try it and go Ugh, this isn't for me like there are a whole bunch of things coming out that'll make it worth your while but not not right now not unless you haven't played yeah forza 4 forza 5, horizon 4 or 5 gears and that's that's the thing right like it's we've the past two years on this show we've been talking about how xbox just hasn't had the content to really drive the key point of difference of game pass over playstation plus which is the new releases which it doesn't have so playstation plus is not that far behind it at the moment and it hasn't been for 18 months uh and so that's why it's a weird time to 
raise all these prices. If yeah. they did it at the end of the year, they did it after Starfield's dropped, after Ford has dropped. They let people buy those the console for that, play that, subscribe for that, and then say December, January, they increase the cost. Maybe I could understand that more. Just a yeah. weird time. We've had a bunch of warning, which doesn't make it much better, really. But like, if I guess if you were serious about this, you knew that you could get in a little bit cheaper. Yeah. And like, I just I bought for myself and for my nephew. I, I spent like four hundred bucks on Game Pass Ultimate, and now like we're both like good till. Like it was only like three or four bucks a month cheaper the way I bought it, but like I guess that that does add up after so long of buying it. So like now we're good to like twenty twenty seven with our subscriptions. So like <laughs> you're not getting any more money out of me, Microsoft. Mm, so cool. like you still, I guess now. you still have time to do it. I think it starts tenth of July or something like that. So like get Can in while the getting's good. Ultimate in bulk? Can you buy twelve months Ultimate Pass? You can, you can buy it right? in, in three months installments and just have to like apply a million codes one after the other that's annoying yeah but the like price the dedicated that's why osbargain.com exists if you haven't heard of it go to it it's great um okay, but playstation just give you 12 months and then every every three months they do like a 30 percent off deal like just yeah just well hey that. playstation you're not off the hook yet either because i only have i should just cancel it i forgot to and i've renewed for another 12 months so like that's how they get you um like i i just want playstation classic playstation one classic re2 yeah. and re3 put on the system so i can like and I'm, I'm i'll buy them when they come out so i can play them if they get taken off like resident evil the original one is off now so i, I want like i just want it to have it like i just hurry up and put good things out on your subscription services people yeah, make it they're, worth they're, your while they've both become a netflix to me they've both become the i've got it because i have it but i don't actually really use it a great deal uh, Game Pass in theory is way more valuable because of the new releases, but there haven't been any, so therefore they're both kind of actually not that great at the moment. So uh, yeah. we've previously been pretty big advocates for both, but especially for Game Pass. So I think fair that we've now, now they've put their price up, revisited that and realized it isn't as good a deal and a great, you know, people are always like best deal in gaming and I agreed with that for a long time. Yeah. But now you're putting your price up. We've had a, a relook and it's not as good of a deal as it used to be. Like it used to have a lot more new stuff coming out and new bigger hits, not like little small games that aren't that great. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I still, if if people have a finite budget, like yeah, probably there's a, there's a market for the it. the S and and the new S. Maybe I don't know if the 550 is much better than 500, but you get a terabyte of storage now, which is probably more like 500 or 800 megabytes. Like that's that's still probably that coupled with Game Pass is like if you're gonna game on a budget, that's probably the the Probably budgety is way to do it people, but it's whether or not things yeah. in the library suit you if like if there's nothing that you want to play having all these games at your disposal doesn't mean anything so yeah well we can go round and round in circles we're back to negative ben and steve around the current state of gaming subscriptions <laughs> get, off my, get off my lawn netflix yeah. we'll, just go play, we'll just go play a, a, we just spent 115 bucks instead the same price for game pass for a year for one single game on playstation which i'm playing so I'll go back to that. Where do we find you on the internet, Steve? I'll do your line this, this week. I'm so proud of you. That's right, AU. Yeah. Keep yeah. going. It's, it's, you go. No, you need to say something. You need to throw it back to me. No, but sure. I always do. I don't know. How do we find you then, Ben? Uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, ben <laughs> underscore Salter on Twitter. <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week. We'll be back next week with something. I don't know what because there's no games coming out. Bye for now.